Okay, everyone, welcome to the Happiness Breakthrough. I'm excited to have Dr. Howard Fisher uh, joining us today. Uh, I'm going to allow, as I do with most of my interviews, I allow them to give their background. But Dr. Fisher is, is fantastic and one that you really want to pay attention and listen to. He is a wealth of knowledge, and in my interactions with him, I have always learned something, and I am sure that you will learn something as well. Dr. Fisher, uh, g give us a little bit about who, who are you? Who, who is this uh, guy? I try to hide, Mark. I basically want to save the world. Uh, I would like everyone to have happiness, health, and prosperity. Uh, the latter is not necessary. However, it helps the other two. And I'm just uh, a doctor who's written oh, my 20th book, where is, I think it's on my desk here, uh, 20 books, uh, all on health. Um, I have degrees in, uh, well, it's got a lot of degrees, but uh, I have a degree in medicine, a degree in chiropractic, and a degree in integrative medicine. The only license that I'm carrying, carry, currently carrying is integrative medicine because I believe this is the, the penultimate. This is right there. This is what you're looking for because it, it brings everything together and rules out nothing. And so in a nutshell, I've been doing this for a, a long time. I started in anti-aging medicine in the 80s. And uh, so fortunately, I, I don't think that, that I look my age and I know I don't act it. So. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't think anyone should act their age. I think uh, we should act our uh, excitement. I think that we should act our energy and, and whatever that is for each of us. It's not something that we just write out there. But I, I'm very curious about this integrative medicine. Uh, you know, for those of us that are listening or tuning in, what, what is that? Uh, integrative medicine, I, I guess the officially started in when anti-aging medicine started and that would be back about 1993 by Dr. Robert Goldman uh, and uh, Dr. Klatz. And basically integrative medicine is bringing in anything, whether it's a, a natural cure, whether it's a traditional cure, whether it's allopathic, uh, into the realm in order to bring about a restoration of health Allopathic medicine is not looking at a restoration of health. They're looking at curing a disease per se. Integrative medicine is looking at integrating everything to returning the person to being a fully functioning physiological entity who is capable of everything, not just blasting and see what we can kill. <laughs> so... You know, one of the things I've, I've seen over the years is that doctors uh, are great at writing prescriptions. And, and that seems to, I mean, I, I know I've gone to doctors and, you know, they just kind of do a quick look over and they say, oh, you need, you need this and insert any, any medication that it seems like they must be on the payroll for. Uh, <laughs> what? Are you suggesting that integrative is not necessarily just about writing a prescription, but it's about really getting to the root cause of what's happening with people? Correct. Correct. I, I, as an example, listen, sometimes the situation has gone so far that we have no way back quickly, quickly enough to restore. Let's put it that way. And, and we need that initial interruption interference in the uh, disease entity but as a general rule if if you have time and you're aware listen most of us aren't facing acute disease most of us are facing chronic disease chronic mm -hmm. disease 90 percent of that it's either 85 to 96 or 90 to 95 90 percent of chronic disease is due to environmental as opposed to genetic factors so an integrative approach would be to examine environment. And I just mean the house you live in. I mean your lifestyle, your nutrition, everything to examine that and explore the options that can restore you to the best health you can be in. 
right, how, how did how did you get into that? I mean, if if you've come from you know other forms of medicine, <laughs> and I mean that there, there's got to be a story here because you've written twenty books on health and you're passionate about it, and uh, and you've been in this health realm and and you know for those of you that are in some form of MLM, you also have an arm that does that, but you're really about restoring all health around everywhere. How did you end up doing that? I'm, I'm really not sure. I, I can't say that I started out wanting to save the world. And I'm not certain how I ended up here. I call it rabbit holes. And a rabbit hole to me is, hmm, that's interesting. I wonder what that's about. And down it I go. I, I'm very anal. I mean, you can look at any, for example, here, this is a book that came out on Ringo 11 years ago. I uh, know, nine years ago, 2011. So this is the footnotes, the footnotes. The book's 120 pages long. Hold, let me get you to the last number. Uh, well, we're up over 500. So I, I like to document everything. Mm. I'm very much not in the convincing business. I'm very much in the presentation of information uh, so that people can make their own opinion. And therefore, if you see the footnote, you can go to the same paper that I read and draw your own conclusion. I believe that the fact that if you have billions of dollars to spend on advertising, you can make anything seem wonderful for you. And uh, we know that, uh, you know, uh, I'm I want to interject. That's really funny because one of my favorite books I read in my doctoral program at Pepperdine was How to Lie with Statistics. <laughs> it, it was uh, absolutely I, fantastic. I go the other way. I go the other way. I, I bluntly want to just give you the information and let you decide. And, and that's why I, I frighten some people for being overly blunt. But the reality is... I think if you understand what's missing, uh, you can put it together. For example, um, one of the best books I've recently read was The Emperor of All Maladies by uh, the brightest oncologist that I know, Siddhartha Mukherjee. And I have a particular interest in, in, uh, in cancer and uh, I work with a lot of cancer patients. And so, and, and basically uh, he brings it out that we, don't know a great deal and we don't communicate enough with one another i.e doctors and patients and and other than putting forward our approach so so i believe that when we just give them the opportunity to learn we can achieve solutions and so let's look at some examples. So right now we have 325, 328 million people in the US. About 27, 28 million have diabetes. 80 million have prediabetes. Mm. What's prediabetes? Well, you kind of have numbers that are indicative of the fact that you're heading in that direction and I guess we don't know how to stop it. But but wait, I know how to stop it. But no, it's prediabetes. So that's one third of the population is either diabetic or prediabetic. And how many billions of dollars are spent on advertising sugar laden entities in the food chain? Oh yeah, because we we, we want we've been conditioned to have food that is hyper palatable, right? Uh, they, they're intentionally creating foods that we crave. We're actually not addicted to the sugar that a lot of people talk about. We're addicted to the hyper palatability of it. It's a sensory piece. And that in and of itself can become addictive. Well, I, I formulate and I know for a fact that we can formulate palatable foods not using sugar mm -hmm. and, and i know for a fact and because i have formulated some of the worst tasting things in the world are horrible and uh, i'm crazy enough to take a teaspoon and put it in my mouth and go hmm i can feel the horseradish so um 
and make them palatable. I don't know where you went. I hope you can still see me because you vanished from me. I can see you. It looks like we're still good. Signal good. seems to be strong. Maybe it's there. Maybe it's there. I don't know where it is. So I will just keep talking at you. How's that? Uh, yeah, let's, yeah, yeah let, let's keep going. Okay, so we were talking about, you know, if, if one third of our country uh, in the United States, it, and, and I do wonder, I do wonder this, if you were to include all of North America, so including the provinces of Canada, it, does that percentage stay the same or? Pretty much, or, pretty much. Canada really? may be a little less, Mexico may be a little higher. So we're including all of North America. Right. Uh, for, for example, I'm putting on a, uh, a talk with some brilliant minds, uh, uh, Dr. Daryl Wolf, Tom Fisher of Hippocrates, uh, Connor Saley, he's a TV personality, and we're going to be lecturing in Melbourne, Florida, March 7th. It's not affiliated with any company. We're giving out information on health, on the emotional relationships, on on the nutritional relationships, on the effects of electromagnetic radiation. Uh, and we want people to be aware and getting the awareness allows you to take a step, to take a step towards, well, your happiness breakthrough, health. Right. And that can come with wealth, although this is not designed to be wealth promoting, but it'll make you happy knowing. If, if, if someone said to you right now, Mark, you know, and I know you're at the gym this morning and, and I did my, my two miles today in 1920, uh, which isn't fast when I, when I talked to one of the lecturers, um, Connor Saley, he went out and he said, you're only gonna run a marathon. He was a, a division one swimmer. Oh, wow. And so, so I'm gonna take a, a so he, he did one, he did, ran 15 miles, came through, okay, two weeks later, ran a marathon, not having won one before, uh, and I'm not sure he fin finished in four hours. Never having run a marathon, and I'm going, that's crazy. That's my pace for two miles, but that's, and he's 25, he's 25, yeah. he's six, six, he's, you know, he says, but, but he understands, and uh, we've got him taking nutritional products that help them overcome that and restore and when people understand you can restore and it doesn't matter if you're 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 70 or you're 25 or you're 10 we understand there's a physiology that most people don't understand now uh coca-cola thank you for the olympics i guess or whatever and um and thank you for those very cute polar bears uh that we always watch at christmas however however that's advertising. And if Coca-Cola wasn't worried, would, would they have bought the Sani? Would Pepsi-Cola have bought Aquafina? Would they, would they start branching out into areas where the world will understand that, hmm, maybe we should make a choice? Uh, because last year uh, was, I think, the second year in a row when the lifespan in the United States shrunk. Wow, wasn't that incredible? Well, it was just it wasn't much. It was a, a few months. Yeah. But it shrunk. In in this day and age, when we have an awareness that oh let me back up. We can have an awareness of what's good for us if we actually look and make the right choices. It's it all comes down to choices. Everything's about choices making the right choices, making the right choice for, for health, making the right choice for, for happiness, making the right choice for wealth. Um, you know, it's, it's all available to anyone who's looking for it by making choices. And uh, I, I love what your title is because I try to be totally organized. I mean, that's, that's my thing. I, uh, I'm the poster boy for ADHD. Uh, but my IQ is enough to overcome all of that. And I have 40 windows open all the time in my computer. And my son is going, dad, dad, come on, you, you take it easy on the ramp. I go, I can't, this is how my mind works. My mind is always working. 
and, and this is how I ended up with 20 books. I didn't intend to write any. I never intended to write a book. It was the rabbit holes. And you know, I never found the rabbits. I just went down the hole. And so um, there's so much we can do for ourselves with awareness. It's just, I don't know. It, it's something that I think for some reason we're being misled and or misdirected. And I understand misdirection because uh, my sister uh, unfortunately passed, passed young and I ended up raising um, her son. My sister raised her daughter and uh, he turned out to be a magician in, in Vegas. And so when, when he was young and, and we were helping him with, with everything, we know about one thing. Uh, is it really magic? I don't think so, but there's a lot of misdirection to allow these things to be happening. And so currently there's misdirection. Okay. So if there is misdirection uh, in, in a lot of places and, and we are living in a world that is uh, very enticing by advertisement and it makes, it makes the salacious to look appetizing what uh what would what would you suggest for someone that is saying hey look if if i think i'm in that 100 million that one third that is either pre-diabetic or diabetic what are you suggesting that they could tactically do to begin to make uh those changes in their life well okay and you're talking about a person doing this on their own yes Okay, as opposed to consulting uh, an integrative medicine physician or, or any of that. Okay, so, so the first thing anyone should do, okay, and, and this is what I would do in taking the feedback. So, Mark, I want you to write down everything that goes into your mouth for the next seven days. You go, why isn't two days enough? No, seven days. Why seven days? Because everybody's cyclical. On the weekends, you don't eat the same as you do during the week. When you're done seven days, then you go and examine what you've eaten. And we know that a proper diet, a proper diet shouldn't be heavy carbs. Even if we were to break it down to carbs, fats, and proteins to go 33, 33, 33, which is not optimal, but better than what most people do. Uh, it's a starting point. Then start to look at sugars. Mm -hmm. And then make, how shall I put it, substitutions. Okay. And everybody can walk. Examine your lifestyle. Are you totally sedentary? Or you were at the gym today. I did my, I did my two miles today. And that doesn't count on the, the other things that I do, but everybody has to, we have to move. That in itself, that initiation in itself will change where you are. And we didn't even get to that. You talked about diabetes. We didn't even get to the fact that the number right now is about 75% overweight or obese in the U.S. population. Right. So I remember... I was, I'd come back from China uh, with my wife and we were uh, driving to a family wedding just outside Toledo and we stopped at uh, an outlet mall and this is within two days of coming back from China and I couldn't see a belt buckle on the men because the bellies were hanging over and I'm going, nah, it's got, it's, it's, it's just because I returned from China. I mean, I've lectured in 30 countries. Um, it's it's got to be, I'm just, I've got some kind of culture shock thing going on. And then, yeah, it was the same. I mean, we have, we have pandemic uh, overweight. Uh, it's just, it's just a crazy thing. And why? Because everything's a carb or contains sugar and no one's looking because it's convenient. And, and here's the other thing. No one's looking because a lot of us are time slaves. Uh oh. No, no, uh -oh. you're, uh -oh. you're, <laughs> you're, you're you're absolutely correct. We we are time slaves, 
and we continue to pile more on our plate. And so it's interesting that you bring that up because when I'm coaching someone, I, I talk about their daily schedule and how much of their time is being sucked by things that really don't have value. Okay. And you know what? So let me bring that up. I, I usually consult on an average year with 300 uh, cancer patients a year. I do it for free. It has value. The value is not in the money. The value is in helping someone who wants help. Yes. And, 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 and I, have, I have my peers. I lecture the truth about cancer. And these are all very, very bright people. But um, they're in a different position relative to the earnings that they need uh, versus don't need. And, and so for me, my value is people. And, and, and even with the, uh, even with the, the program, uh, with, uh, we're doing it in March, uh, we're charging $99 for what should be a thousand dollars for that day. Mm -hmm. And because none of the doctors are getting paid, no one's, no one's getting paid. We're covering the room. Uh, some people get expenses covered, uh, maybe not. But the reality is you have to draw a line where you're about to share with everyone and help everyone because we are one. Everyone is one. And a lot of people don't get that. Uh, a lot of people really don't understand that. Um, I know the first time we spoke, we had a great conversation. Yes. I just met you. Uh, you were talking about Britton McDowell. You're talking to him. I love Britton. Uh, we've been uh, intense friends um, since we met. And so uh, the bottom line is we share and we want to share. Uh, he even started a program with me where we teach. Anyone who wants to be a health coach can be a health coach and we'll give them the education they need. And if they don't even want to be a coach, they can get an understanding. And, and once again, we kept the cost down to almost nothing. Uh, same programs with five, six thousand dollars. I think uh, Britain's gone up for seven fifty, right? So you have to excuse me, but this, this is a patient that I can't take right now. Okay, I will get back to her. No problem. You know, you know, it was interesting when I said, you know, I look at the, you know, the things that are value or that are time suckers. I was not actually referring to financial gain because as you said, some of the most valuable articles of life are our connections with other people. And you can't quantify how much that conversation with someone is worth. And, and why try? Because we are designed changing lives to, Change to be life. connected with people. We're designed to talk with, with others and find ways that, that we can be of service, right? A, a real servant leader is actively seeking for opportunities to go out and help and bless other people, not because they want to make money, but because they have a heart designed to help, to love. Ab absolutely, Mark. Absolutely. And I think it's, it's really important uh, that we follow along with our own belief system in wanting to help others. I, I think that is extremely important. Um, because, you know, what kind of world would it be if everybody followed the one rule, the golden rule? What kind of world would it be? It'd be a wonderful world. Yeah. Because I want you to succeed. I want you to do uh, the best you can do. And I'm here to help you. And when I have a, a no, I have a broad knowledge base. I'm happy to share it. I, I'm happy to share it. So you know, and and that's and that's what makes you know. As you were talking about, you want to change the world. It seems like that's part of your vision is to share your knowledge, to share with others, and you're treating cancer patients for free. There's something that you don't know about me, is that I was diagnosed with lung cancer five times. We'll talk after. We'll talk after this, and uh, I will actually uh, change the world. 
you know what? It, it wasn't lung cancer. I was diagnosed five times. Oh. Uh, yeah, believe it or not. So I've gone through that roller coaster of emotions. And, and yeah. I know what it's like to have that biopsy and to have, you know, the oncologist say, you know, it's metabolically active. And, and I ended up having something called Castleman's disease and uh, a very rare disease where a lymph node decides to become <laughs> metabolically active, start to grow. And, uh, but, you know, I, I've been through the ups and downs of that. And it's amazing what a difference, being on the patient side, what a difference it makes for a physician, for, for someone in the medical profession to truly feel like, like they love and care for you. Because it, it, it changed. You really have to. It changed how it changed my recovery when when I had that. Yeah, yeah. No. So uh, uh, it's you know my adage is that I'm willing to help anybody that wants to help themselves, and I'm not here to convince you that this is the way. But if you want to listen to the information and process the information. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer the questions. And then uh, move forward. And, and if after listening, you say, yeah, you know what, it's not for me, I go, great, have a good day. Right, right, absolutely. Uh, how, how could someone get in touch with you if they wanted to, uh, to, to, to kind of hear about you? <laughs> I'm hidden, but for you, um, let me give you a phone number. How's that? Sure. Does that work? Uh, 270. 370-2594. And if they're calling me, they have to mention you. Okay. So there you go. If, if you really want to learn more about, uh, and you know, this integrative medical approach to life, which is wholeness, really. I mean, what, what I hear is about getting your wholeness about you. We're, we're whole beings. Uh, what, what, uh, you know, if, if, yeah. if, if, if you're on front of a computer, www.hocacademy.com, that's where you can get a lot of information about, uh, learning, learning. Mm. It's just, just to look there and, and that will give you, I, I'm the, the senior academic dean there. I like to control, um, the information, so I make sure there's a reality to it that people can apply easily. To apply easily, and as you said before, you know, how do we overcome obesity? How do we overcome diabetes? By examining our lifestyles and and seeing what's there and what's what's not there. And you know, everybody has a basal metabolic rate depending on how sedentary you're not. You know, women about 1,200, men about 2,000, uh, larger size, uses more caloric intake. Well, if you're eating 8,000 calories a day, uh, chances are you're heading for obesity unless you're playing, you know, uh, um, linebacker for uh, <laughs> the Packers, you know, in which right. case, you know, that's probably not enough. Uh, and, and if you're, uh, you know, an offensive lineman, that's probably not enough. And the reality is because you've got to maintain your, your, your muscle bulk and have things going. But everybody, everybody has that. And so there's no one that can't be simply coached. Now, whether or not they do it is another thing. And, and uh, oftentimes you need people to, well, I, I forgot. I forgot. So you, here's, here's something. You want to see a really expensive uh, behavior modification tool? It's a Sharpie. Yes, it is. <laughs> okay. So draw on your thumbnail. And every time you see the, the dot, don't eat carbs. Switch to fruit. You'd be amazed that this is a 99-cent uh, diet plan. Behavior modification. We try to make it so simple that failure is difficult. Yeah. And... and uh, and I, I know you're involved in, in, in network marketing, and we try to educate these people uh, who are involved in network marketing because most of the companies have at least a great product. Otherwise, they wouldn't be there. They have a great product that can't be replicated elsewhere, 
and that should be their focus. It's right. the, the way it is. So when I was in Vietnam um, three years ago, and so you get off at the airport and you're walking out of the airport into the beautiful tropical weather, which you have in Arizona, of course, uh, and over every doorway is Amway. There's a sign for Amway. And I remember Amway from, it's been around forever, and I don't ever remember them having any product that was significant. I remember they had products that they were working on selling uh, the marketing and making an income. And so, and, and that's okay. I have nothing against that. But if you look now, you see all these companies that have great products. Mm -hmm. And so it helps if the people who are in these companies understand health, understand physiology, understand why you might even want to be taking this product, understanding how the environment's working against you. So uh, the ultimate bottom line is no one hurts from education. A a amen. Uh, continue to educate yourself. Hey, I I've got a question for you. You know, you've done a lot in life. You've written 20 books. You have multiple degrees. You're, you have done some pretty phenomenal things. You, uh, even in, uh, the multi-level marketing world, you've been successful there, but I want to know something about not Dr. Fisher, but I want to know something about Howard. I want to know, is there some, some habit that you do on a daily basis in the morning at night? Is there something that you could look back and say, you know, this is my non-negotiable. I make sure I do this every day. Nutrition. Okay, nutrition. Not non non negotiable. Non negotiable. I I've been vegetarian. Uh, well, I think it started when opening my first cadaver and looking at peck and going, "Ooh, that's a steak." Yeah, this is wrong. Uh, so that's decades, you know, yep. into the fourth. Um, I golf a lot, a lot. Okay. Uh, golf is very zen for me. Very zen for me. Uh, I golf for me. I don't golf for others. I just golf for me. I, I, I happen to be a reasonable golfer. And someone say, are you a good golfer? I go, no, the good golfers are on the tour. Because I, my, my evaluation point in everything. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, if I don't shut them off, they continue to ring. And oh, yeah. well, you understand. And so uh, everything, everything, uh, whether it's lecturing, whether it's writing a book, whether it's speaking uh, to anybody, whether it's giving advice, my yardstick has to be up here. So I've been a scratch golfer uh, for 10 years. Uh, and now as I'm getting up there, I call it, I'm about three, four from the blues and, and scratch from the whites. And so people say, well, you're a good golfer. I go, no, I'm not. The good golfers are on the tour, and you just see the PGA. Mm. You don't see all those other tours where guys are getting out there. And so, so I'm an okay golfer, but we have to understand that everything is relative to the best, to the to the best, and and that's where my yardstick is. So if there's something about me that is non-negotiable. It's where the yardstick is. It's, it's where you set what you're going to give your opinion on. It's mm. how you value your integrity. And so that's the thing. It's, yeah. you know, it's important for everyone to value your integrity. And if I tell you something, if, you don't need a contract. Uh, you don't need even a handshake. If I say I'm going to do this, we had an appointment to be here for this, I'm here. Yeah. Uh, it, it didn't take anything more than that. And that's how I am in life. Always. You know, I, that's, that's great advice for success is integrity. If you say you're going to do something, do that. 
just just do what the promises that that you've made and and seek for opportunities to serve to help to lift seek for opportunities to to educate um not to tell but to educate and there's there's a difference one last question as we are wrapping up here if this was the 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 un, the absolute unfortunate happened and this was the last year of your life uh what is one thing that you would want to do in the next 12 months spend as much time as i could with my grandchildren my family and 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 understand i see my grandchildren every day and uh i'm fully prepared at all times for this to be the last year of my life hmm. and so um, I try to live every day and get the most out of every day. And I try to embrace people and I try to help as many as I can. And so I will continue doing that. And uh, I'm always happy to help. When, whenever I can help, I'm happy to help. If, if the cause is good, uh, if there's value for humanity, um, I'm probably going to be there. I'm probably going to say, sure, let's do it. Absolutely. I appreciate that, Dr. Fisher. Uh, for those of you that would like to reach out to him, you can definitely go to www.hocacademy.com uh, or you can even call him. He, he gave his phone number here, but if you do that, there was a caveat. He said, you have to mention Dr. Mark Leonard, the happiness dude through the happiness breakthrough. One of those three will work. Um, Dr. Fisher, thank you so much for the time that you spent here. Thank you uh, for your leadership, for your willingness to go to serve, to help, and to change the world one person at a time, because that is what we have been called to do, is to go out and to make a difference in the world. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you've liked this show, uh, please share it with your friends. If you would like to take a clip from it, let me know, and I can help you with that. Uh, we want to make sure that we are out there spreading truth, spreading joy, spreading happiness, because we are together, banded together to make a difference in the world. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Thank you, Mark.